Hi, this is Alex Ross. Uh, thank you very much for sending in your books for CGC. Uh, the deadline for final books to come in is April 14th, and I look forward to signing all the material. I hope he was doing it on your kitchen wall. <laughs> and then you're just like, well, I got to leave that there at this spiritual experience. Thanks, Alex Ross, and now I got to leave it there. <laughs> By the way, I mean, uh, I know we we covered a lot of all these different things here, but I, I feel remiss that we didn't talk at all about um, uh, your your AI comic, which <laughs> if, I know I you... don't really have much of a relationship to in terms of, you know, other than I'm one of the people potentially to be replaced. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I it was a fascinating thing. You definitely created a uh, a work of, you know, something that deserves a lot of attention and a thought-provoking work for sure <laughs> so for it. anybody that's ready to read a couple of lectures <laughs> yeah yeah we're, we've pushed comics into philosophy uh we got we got uh, actually issue five is written by the guy who's about to found the um yale yale center for ai and digital ethics so Luciano Floridi is a hardcore academic involved in that. But if you do He's have hardcore, time... hardcore, that's for sure. He's not choosing <laughs> to dumb his language down. And I had to read these sentences a few times. like, And I'm still like, that's too many big words in a row, man. Come on. <laughs> dumb it down for the rest of us laymen. You know, that's why I said at the end, the I said comics really are for adults now, like the adults that sit around and make <laughs> EU European policy. That's who's writing that. Book. Well, Carson well, and I did our best to dumb to, to, to take it to a dumb uh, a level on issue two and three. And then the robot uh, uh, brought the, all the brutality in issue four. So, uh... well, no, I mean, this is I have to understand, like, you know, from when you were making this back in June of last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is earlier stages for the development of the AI, like in terms of responding to prompts, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it wasn't as realistic back then. Okay. That's the simple answer for what I had to ask because um, my introduction to it comes a bit later. Um, the comic artist, Dave Johnson, a friend of mine, uh, he shared with me some of the stuff saying, Hey, have you seen this stuff? And yeah. he sent me some examples and nothing set my world on fire then it, it, except to say like oh cool he captured that artist work pretty well or you know it was a good approximation of certain things but when it veered towards more challenged realism it began to fall apart right. and so as david said to me then and i'll still quote it for you uh you know how good were you when you first started to draw so if right. the AI yeah. is developing, it's going to get better. Of yes. course, it has gotten better with the things that I've now seen a lot of images of on YouTube. And, and I was wondering, did your series, this sounds like a horrible critique, did your series misrepresent the capacity for what the computer was going to be able to do, what the AI could meet the demand for, which is, you know, more graphically competitive competent comics as opposed to very abstract representations which is what it got when you first put this together um well i i think part part of the reason we were so specific about the dates is because we were by the time we were like getting ready to, to publish it and writing those essays we had seen the development and we're actually on our patreon right now doing a webcomic experiment called prane day so the the character from issue two and three prane um, we're doing like a kind of Groundhog Day story where the patrons can vote to say like how he tries to change his next time he goes through the cycle, what is he trying to do different to get out of it? And each time we do it, we're like using a different AI or a different style prompt. And we're also using that to track, well, this is what version three produced. This is what version four produced. Because we're very interested in like um, how the AI like we probably did map misrepresent its capabilities in the sense that I didn't do any real laborious prompting. Like people, when we were making that, could get more realistic imageries through more laborious prompting. What I was curious about was what were its natural capabilities. So if I just give it this sentence, what will it do? Or if I just give it a fairly simple description, what will it do? Especially with like don't you don't you then get as a result effectively almost a childlike interpretation yes. in the sense that 
it may have the capacity of pulling all this information in, but it doesn't yet have the experience of curating it and assembling yeah. things in a way to make itself clearer. So when stuff looks so bizarrely abstract and upsettingly abstract, um, is that not really a misrepresentation of what it would really want to communicate? Um, I don't think so, because like in, in the, where we're trying to tell the story, you know, that one, I wasn't just feeding it since it's like, this is, we need a guy walking down a hallway doing this and doing this and doing this. And that actually got worse images, the more explicit you were trying to tell it <laughs> right. what to do. Right. And that's still the hardest part. It seems much better at poetic interpretation, like feed it the sentence and you get an image and you kind of like, oh yeah, I can see, I can see the relationships here. But if you're like, I need this guy doing this, it's really bad at that. So I think what we're doing is actually showing it's what its powers really are when people aren't in over involved and the people who are getting the more realistic images are really kind of, as far as I'm concerned, bullying it into producing those results. And they're, they're jumping between multiple AI sometimes like this one will do a better composition. This one does a better job with hands. So I'll pull it in this one and use the edit feature. And, and, and and those type of manipulations don't really get to where it exists at that moment. Uh, and, you know, like Carson and I talked about this the first couple of weeks that we had access, like uh, I, I pointed out to him there were different ways to manipulate it into giving a different kind of result. Like, for instance, like you, you say girl or you say peasant girl and peasant girl automatically in mid journey produced a more pleasing physical uh, image because uh, all of the reference images are probably pulling from peasant girl paintings uh, that were popular in with French painters in the 17th and 18th century. And so it has like a better basis of like, okay, we're going to structure this like a face. Oh, it wants it to be good. Okay, here we go. Um, and, and similarly, you could, you know, fool it into using celebrity names uh, and it would give you more consistency of character from panel to panel. But those types of things are not really reaching you, you're you're right. We're, we're, the, the the comic ends up not showing off the like commercial capabilities of it, but it does yeah. end up giving you more insight. I think into I mean that first essay, uh, the the C.S. Lewis essay. I mean, I feel like the first time I read that, Carson, I felt like I was commu communing with an alien intelligence, um, and this might be like an alien intelligence that is fairly limited in some ways. Uh, or it might be something that's oppressively skilled in other ways. I mean, uh, you know, you can give me your 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 professional opinion, Alex, but I was shocked by how competent it is at color unity. Uh, virtually anything that it produces as a single image has, uh, I mean, utterly sophisticated use of of color, and I was just absolutely shocked that that would be the thing that it could do right out the gate when the you know basic figural stuff was just totally garbage i mean <laughs> you know who who knew that that would be i mean it's, i certainly didn't i you know uh its capacity for doing anything that we could imagine is what i always expected was coming so yeah. hmm. the fact that it's kind of going through its <clears throat> initial birthing process right now is the thing where I wonder, well, I'm not so super interested in this, even though it's supposed to be my doom. I figure I'll check in when it's gotten its, you know, it's walking upright a bit more. Right. You know, like when it's knocking at my door saying, hey, by the way, I took your job. Maybe I'm going to be a lot more alert. But in this way, I'm also following what I either find inspiring, interesting, but also for a lot of the images I've seen that are more, um, you know, reasonably developed and realistic. It's the things that are off mm -hmm. that are more disturbing to me. Um, maybe not as disturbing as the series you produced. Holy cow. <laughs> this is the stuff of nightmares. I mean, yeah. good God, the abolition of man. Like, you know, you guys aren't really burying what, what kind of impression we want to create on people's minds here. You know, no. like that pretty much says it all right there. It's like, we're trying to scare you. So if, yeah. anybody, if anybody wants to buy a contemporary horror comic <laughs> that you will never get over the images you saw within it, this is the book for you. Thank you. We Living the it. line. It will be, be coming out 
deluxe hardcover <laughs> edition sometime this summer with a nice leather bound cover to make it extra biblically creepy oh my heavens no oh god yeah um but no when i see like when i see these realistic images where it's showing you know faces that are incredibly well rendered i can find it it's stimulating just for the moment of looking at it on youtube and going through hey here's the batman movie that could have been or the uh, <laughs> lord of the rings done in the 1940s and whatever but when there's those slight things that are off, like a hand with extra fingers or, you know, the eyes are always the tough part. I'm looking at the eyes and yeah. some, you know, you'll see an eye with a secondary eye within it. Yeah, That's a common defect that occurs or a nostril that goes too far in the wrong direction. And, you know, those things make me go, oh, I, I got to leave this alone for a while. I don't want to see any of this for a while until those bugs are worked out because uh. that is like, looking at an alien interpretation of life yeah but see i find those more compelling like i like like now that it's getting closer i'm like it's worse it's interesting like it's 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 been bullied into the average almost like is what it feels like now and it does look and, average that's for right. sure because each illustration has a sameness that's now occurring where it feels like okay hey alex ross that's your painter job being lost like because I make so many damn comics that you need to get in somebody there to do it all for me. Like, yeah. I don't know that you want a million Alex Rosses or no. every comic to look like a painted experience, you know, like, I don't know that it's so much meant for this world as much as I thought it has a facility to offer those graphic effects we see in movies with, you know, what's all digital. Like maybe they could do the work of, a hundred animators easier and maybe it could bring to life things that we see only drawn on the page into movement life eventually that's where i see it all going so it's yeah. more replacing stuff that gets done in that field because that's a bigger field than our little you know club here so it may be able to take over this world although i'll be surprised when the first comics that kind of go after traditional illustration as done by AI, will they set the world on fire? And will we have the next steps be publishers saying, we're not gonna hire any AI artists because we're making a pledge. And then- There's already, there's already been one, uh, Mad Cave made some kind of uh, uh, Twitter statement that they would never hire. He, he said specifically, I'm checking portfolios and I'm looking for people who have AI stuff. It's like. Well, this is a very interesting, bold move, gentlemen. Well, even if even if they're not like like because we did abolition, he wouldn't hire me to just do totally that's hand right stuff. Yeah, that's kind of that's nuts. right. Because I well, will but, say I'm a way better artist now. I I, I improved yeah. as an artist. I leapt more than I have in the last ten or fifteen years just because of working with that stuff. Because I was learning lessons from. Uh, it, it taught me how to let loose it taught me to focus on composition like there was a lot of lessons i learned from using it that improved me so it's like you, you just say i can't use ai but uh, the lines are being drawn in a weird way yeah that's just strange. just realizing for me that the diffusion process is part of the way that we generate things mentally that that it comes out of this cloud of smoke uh has made physical changes in the way that like i i'm i'm penciling much much lighter anticipating it being cloudier and weirder at the start and you know i didn't happen until i actually watched you know a certain amount of those things pop out and like realizing intellectually that like part of the process is that sort of gestural looseness at the beginning is prompting your brain to see something in the noise so mm. one one last thing with AI, if you're willing to do it, I want to show you something that a friend of ours made, and it goes back to the the talk about character as well, and then your your critique of how the AIs paint. So just for some context, this is our friend NFN Kalyan, um, who's a fantastic painter himself. This is a painting of his he did. It's all oil paint, and you can see. Oh yeah, a little bit of me in there. Sure. He's he's yeah he's a fan of your work, um, as along with a lot of other comics. Oh, so artists. that's a real thing oh yeah 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 this is his real painting he got into the ai and he started using you <laughs> to produce uh some political portraits okay and so, 
we thought it would be funny, especially because you were talking about character. Like, what's your critique of this painting? How well has the AI done in capturing your style and like how you would go about making a portrait? Oh, well, I mean, it, it does more than fine. The problem with sameness comes in is that the capacity for the AI's rendering is so much more worked over than where I even leave off that mm -hmm. the highlights, the careful uh, sculpting tools brought along all the skin there. I, I often give up before going that far and it's carefully rendering every little piece, every fold of skin with perfect highlights and all that little stuff that, um, sure, is it similar to what I do? Absolutely. Um, most of the stuff I see is better than what I do based upon the criteria of going for more elaborate realism or more elaborate rendering, yeah. you know, because I often, you know, I take it to only one level and then I, I kind of hit a wall and then there it is, it remains. Whereas the AI can keep going and going and going. I mean, if, if you wanted to, the AI could eventually be putting a full skin texture to every one of these illustrations. Yeah, you know, so right. it wouldn't be just a kind of a waxy finish. It would be, you know, with every sense of uh, poor detail coming through, which is a lot of what I see coming out of the digital artists who are working on film development and or any of the stuff you see with regards to um, graphics made for movie posters and other media where we want it to have the nth degree. Well, like, I'm not painting pores for you. You know, I'm not, I don't have screens I can add with things that will enhance that kind of effect because that's just the level of where I stop close. If I have an extreme close up of a human form that would get you that level of detail, then yeah, I could probably paint that by hand for you. Am I going to naturally put that into my illustrations, that level of texture? No, no, I'm not. You know, that's the point where I end and, you know, another technology takes over. So, um, but then it also comes down to, does it connect with people enough? Do they right. want that? I mean, that was a lovely image. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Uh, I mean, aside from the subject. Um, <laughs> well, that was my other question well, it, is, it, do it, you fear like that, that it does get close enough that someone could start saying, well, look, like you painted this political figure uh, we're not trying to get a sense of what your actual political politics are, but like someone painted a political figure in your style and is using it to like promote someone's campaign because of the AI is, is that kind of thing problematic for artists going forward where now you kind of people could claim that you did this, that you're promoting this, that you're behind this message. I'm not really so much overthinking how that's an issue for the art to be created because it's not taking from something I did and just altering it. It's about trying to create something new in the style of, but I have no authority over realism. I have no authority over the kind of lighting techniques that I regularly lean on. You know, they're open to anybody to use. So if you match me for that, I mean, what sucks is if you're starting to see art where it's too much like that's clearly the same model I've been using. Mm. You know, yeah. like, well, that maybe you should get your own model or don't trace that exact drawing I did. And that's happened to me plenty of times. And that seems like that's too close. But if you're inspired by the work of another artist and you create something new, like I could easily see myself trying to imitate the men that have inspired me. I could try and imitate Bernie Wrightson. And I've certainly uh, done work where I've, you know, relived compositions by other people. And that seems all like fair game directly claiming that another person did something well that's an action that's just like that itself should be illegal right now that's its own sin of right you know misleading people but to mimic the style of somebody i don't know it's it's always a slippery slope because growing up i liked the comics that artists were influenced by neil adams and they did his style in a faux way that i enjoyed those comics yeah I would have liked more stuff from that person because he was such a compelling draftsman that I was happy to get second rate versions of him. Yeah. You know, and that's the way art works is that it bleeds into other lives and other people being influenced. And so uh, is it a sin? I don't know that it's a sin. 
there's there's a slippery slope to it and it does come down to the distinctiveness between nuance of did this thing go too far this one way did this person steal too much from a person you know taking an exact jack kirby panel and putting it into your work and just redrawing the figures in 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 some other styling but but it's that pose jack did well that's too much maybe I, I, I don't want to see that image again, Carson, but I do want to point out that um, it has the same problem that almost every AI image does, uh, which is uh, still an issue of hierarchy. Uh, when, when, it was, when the AI was not particularly good, uh, when we were using it and getting this very evocative horror uh, images out of it. Uh, and by the way, what does that mean when you said when it wasn't very good, but your work wound up looking like all of Dave McKean's work? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's very interesting. You're right, because 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 I, I think maybe Dave was uh, simultaneously uh, offended and uh, honored uh, by that <laughs> aspect of it. But um, it, well, that's so why Dave, I like it Dave, better. Dave has hierarchical breakdowns in his work as a routine part of his work. Um, but he uses those in a way that is purposeful, uh, I believe. You know, it, you, you see a broken person and you see something that is breaking in a way that is suggestive and expressive. Uh, the, 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 when, when the AI started, it didn't understand the hierarchy of a face. You look at this face that looks perfect in certain kinds of ways, but it doesn't know that the eye is any import, more important than the ear. Uh, yeah. And it doesn't know that there's a certain kind of symmetry. It doesn't understand that a hand grasps. And it doesn't understand that a thumb opposes or that it moves in. It doesn't right. have a sense of hierarchy. It's a schizophrenic view of the world. That that Trump image that we were looking at, even though it has made leaps and bounds, it still lacks the hierarchy of basically anything you've ever painted, Alex, because it he's giving it 100% the entire thing. Like you're saying, the texture is is happening simultaneously everywhere, whereas you're building no, it's in... Not. You're going to have uh, to look at it again now. <laughs> Do I have to look at it again? It, look at look that, at, man. It's, no, it's, but it's 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 softening up on the detail down here, and the hair is way right. less. So it is creating right. focus in the middle now. I, and it It's is, the waxiness. It's the waxiness of the rendering that specifically I'm thinking about. Skin, I, yeah. I, I feel like a, a, Alex is like your stuff play gives us the sense of paint, uh, uh, you know, the sense of paint as a method of hierarchy like that you you are allowing your brush strokes and the handling to be part of the hierarchy that's present there i was noticing uh even in the early stuff like looking at the just flipping through marvels like how you have like abstraction as a method of hierarchy like where a photo would have a blown out uh blurry black background uh you're all of a sudden using washes or whatever i just i i, I think that that's the still the tell right now is the lack of hierarchy to the ai stuff that being said this is all obviously going to be out in the wash in uh, a matter of months or years and these are not going to be limitations soon or right you know, but i mean you know what that also that piece reminds me of is the caricaturist kruger you know that guy mm -hmm. does these phenomenal paintings of different celebrities and rock stars and they have often a very distorted impression. Like there's a famous mm -hmm. okay. cover of one of his books, I think of Jack Nicholson's face. It's very distorted, yeah. but it's so well rendered as to be almost photographically painted, but over this really distorted head shape. And gotcha. it's like if you, you know, did the same thing over, uh, you know, paintings of, uh, I know his work isn't exa as exaggerated, but Mort Drucker's caricatures from Mad, if you had made all those fully rendered lifelike paintings, <laughs> well, suddenly it's like, they it's seem like more... him with Drew Friedman painting on top of it, right? Like, sure, yeah, yeah okay. that's a yeah. good example. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting and uh, it has its use. You know, I mean, I don't see, uh, you know, again, I see this as still falling into the parameters of a cooperative relationship between graphic artists using these tools, and you know some of it will be useful for publishing i don't know that it will take over publishing maybe that is what's happening or coming um and if so i had a good run i can say that i was well treated in the time i was here so uh you know your your worries should not necessarily be for me maybe the worries for everybody else you know um but i i kind of want to keep an open mind to it as much as i can and say that like there is bizarrely 
and I have no reason to be predicting the future here, but there is equally the possibility of the use of this stuff could also burn out in the way of people finding it engaging, that you could yeah. get all this stuff being applied to print and to motion in, in other film TV media where people eventually get tired of it and say like, yeah, that doesn't work for them anymore. It's entirely feasible. Doesn't mean that the computer AI isn't still learning and growing and wanting to prove itself. I don't know if it wants anything, but you know, yeah. um, all those things are possibilities. So as much as we can predict the worst possible outcome for all things, there is also the mundane that lurks around yeah. which is people eventually going eh. well you you sir make wonderful artwork in the physical realm uh that is then reproduced that is very different uh uh for people who have decoupled their lives from physical process <laughs> i would recommend that you go outside and grip that dirt gentlemen and you lick that snail uh, and don't lick the snail. That's that's why your <laughs> yeah. kid was painting on the wall like a shaman this morning, just because he licked a snail. <laughs> wow, wow. Uh, I'm just saying, like I'm, I can imagine a future in which, uh, you know, the the Alex Rosses of the world grind their own pigments uh, and uh, perform in the town circle where everybody can see every moment uh, uh, of the creation of the. Oh God, uh, I, I remember Dave's response to your saying something just like that was pretty much like great now he becomes a performance artist the last thing in the world he ever wanted is everybody yeah. watching him doing this stuff so yeah i i get that too i mean it's like it's like what well, you actually reflected upon this yourself when you were talking about your music background talking to dave mm -hmm. about how recording writing recording gave way to the lived right. experience of performance and yeah. that that was the one way that that art form could then be engaged. And for those of us that had no intention on being performers, that doesn't sound like a great answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a bummer to think about such a high percentage of people that went into my field, they subsist entirely off of going to conventions. Yeah. That's a different right. kind of engagement. Yeah. And it's not easy for everybody. Not everybody's excited about that. I'm mm -hmm. not. I mean, I've been as best behaved as I think I can be, but it can also be um, a place that tires you, you yeah. know, because oh, now you're sure. traveling, you're, I mean, so you think about that for every um, music artist. Right. I, I would love to think that everybody could have had the fortune the Beatles had but when they were done with touring around 65, 66, that they could say, okay, we're just going to record now. Now they had, four years left of that in them before they said, I can't stand you anymore. I don't want to be near you. So maybe that itself answers in a way why everybody shouldn't get that fortune. But, um, but, but some you people know, want to be a studio musician too. They don't ever want to tour. They have a family. They don't want to be on the road. They want to be at home, but they're exceptional right. musicians and they get called in for studio gigs. And I think, you know, like a lot, probably all three of us are probably more temperamentally studio musicians. Like we like to sit there and work on our thing and you go do the convention and meet some people and it's like fun, but tiring. And then you're like, I'm like, well, by the time we were done with two days of San Diego, we were both <laughs> like, get me the hell out of here, you know? Right, right. And that is the lifestyle for so many different people, you know, and I, I hate the idea of that overtaking this art form as being a necessary means of survival. And, and maybe in most, so many ways it has. Um, certainly when you fall out from getting commercial work, um, suddenly, well, you gotta pick it up somewhere and that's where it falls in. And, uh, and that hasn't been my fortune in, as of yet, but um, you know, I just don't know that that relates so much to what the discipline is. It's not necessarily a performative art I don't want to stand around and watch an artist draw in front of me. I know what it <laughs> takes to put pencil to page and, you know, like, I don't want to stand there and watch you create that thing slowly. I don't find that stimulating. Some people yeah. do. I'm, I'm glad we hit fun. all these things. I was hoping to talk to you about your works because they are really important and deserve some more attention. At least when I, I Keith Anderson, who was hanging out with me last night, I, I brought the books out to show to him and he said like, oh, I remember selling this. So that's one comic store owner that was selling your book. 
Thank you, you Keith's know? Comics. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it's important to get that spread of knowledge. And uh, I'm grateful for everybody that brought, uh, grateful for Bob Chapman, who brought your book to my attention. I thought it was, you know, a uh, revealing and engaging work. And I'm glad I get a chance to tell you guys. You can pass that along to Dave. Thank you <laughs> very much, Alex. I mean, what a tremendous treat. And uh, I Thank really you so appreciate much for it. having me. Well, it was yeah. a real pleasure. And uh, like uh, anytime you have an excuse, let's do it again. And we will we'll do it in a more abbreviated fashion. Uh, if that is uh, is that is your wish, you you let us know your list of demands and we'll make it happen uh, to the specs. So green. I appreciate it. It's been a joy. Make sure to like smash that subscribe button and ring that bell.